Welcome everyone to the Nosh podcast. Welcome to the Nosh 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 podcast. Welcome everyone to the Nosh podcast. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by Beanboard China Walter. <laughs> and this time I pronounce it well. And so for today we are going to talk about a very very important a subject that I believe that it will be a value to your life. So, Nosh podcast. This podcast was made by foreigners to foreigners. Uh, our vision is to bring to the world what actually the foreigners live, uh, they face in the foreign land. The word Nosh, it means in Portuguese, we. We, because we, we, we extract this word from the, say, the, from the African say Ubuntu, uh, together we stand, together we are. So uh, for today, I have um, a very special guest. <laughs> today I'm blessed because I'm feeling king. You know, I'm the, the only male in the middle of very beautiful girls. So for the beginning, uh, I will ask everyone to start introducing uh, herself and also to explain what is the reason that she's doing here in India so let's start with our beautiful sister <laughs> thank you Jerry uh, yeah. so my name is uh, Betty uh, or Bethlehem uh, would be my full name um, so I um, I'm yeah I'm from uh, originally from e Ethiopia uh, but I lived in the U.S. for some time and then moved to uh, India. Um, the reason why I am in India is because my husband and I um, are have a business. Uh, business is here and Chinaw, Beanboard Chinaw Altair um, happens to be one of them. Um, so that's why I'm in India. Oh, that's great. And Hello, everyone. I am Yanira Georgina and I'm here doing my third year of civil engineering. I have been here since uh, January 21st, 2021. And where are you from? Ah, yeah. <laughs> we are from the same country. Ah. From Angola. <laughs> where are you from? Angola. Angola. Angola, okay. okay. It's a pleasure. Welcome to be here. Uh, and you may... <coughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> so, hey everyone. This is Janvi Gupta. I am from Nepal and I'm also doing engineering and computer science enge uh, engineering and I'm in third year too and the reason I came here is like South India has like known for like you know engineering and everything yes. so it's better so that's how I was suggested to come here so now I'm here <laughs> oh that's great and you? <sighs> uh, hello everyone I'm Blessy uh, I'm an Indian, born up, um, born and born up, raised in <laughs> India in Wysak. Uh and I'm a home baker, so I have my own baking business at home, and I also uh, do a social work in slum areas. Yeah, and you should try her cake, man. It's the best one here in India. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely. So welcome to the Nosh podcast. Yeah, it's a real pleasure to have you guys here. Uh, I believe that for the next, the next episode, we will invite more people from different places. As I spoke in the beginning, um, in the first episode, we, we talk about our experience, introduction to India, like what we were thinking before we reached this place and what we think now after reaching this place and have... Uh, experience with different Indians and actually we have a good feedback from you guys who follow us we want to thank you guys all of you who shared the link who commented uh, your comment is very important we too cannot we have done many ratifications according to your note and forgive us if we commit uh, a certain mistake or we say something that we didn't have uh, enough argument of it but yeah this is the way that we think and we are here to express ourselves so for today we are talking about indian uh indian woman and international woman the values differences 
culture and social life. <laughs> I believe that everyone is excited to listen to these beautiful girls, what they think about it and what they have to share. Yeah. Uh, I also will share something if I have, but yeah, I have the best persons here to, <laughs> to speak about women. Uh, let's ask my sister from Nepal, Javi, how is to be a woman in Nepal and how the parents educate their the, the daughter? Oh, okay, so as for me, I would say that in Nepal and India, Nepal and India, I would say, like, is almost similar, you know? Like, yes. there's not much difference even in culture, rituals, or anything. So, I'd say, like, uh, the way they raise their children here is the way they raise in Nepal, too. I would say that there are, like, comparatively to this city, I would say there's a lot difference I saw, but I would say that there's not much of the difference, I would say. Like, we are raised, like, under the guidance of our parents, they teach us how to be like yeah. strong enough when we go like for further stu studies outside for a job or for anything like they like they help us to grow since childhood and it's not something like I'd say like something like Yanira told mm -hmm. that uh, cooking and everything you learn yeah. it uh, earlier is something I would say that it's also on you if you want to learn or not like it's something as for me it's not something that my mother or father forced me to do but it's something that i had interest in learning cooking so that's what helped me here so i would like that of course like learning by yourself is good and it's also about all your interest and everything so i'd say like our uh, parents also allow us to you know, learn things, go out and do, and they have also restrictions at the places where we actually need to be at. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. I'm looking forward to test something from Nepal that you learned. <laughs> for, for sure. So, yeah. So this is the students' views about life and about how to be raised as a woman. So let's move to the top level now. <laughs> I call it top level. So, Betty, how was to, to, to grow up as a woman in Ethiopia? Yeah, so um, I think um, just First like... in Ethiopia and then in and the then US. And then in the U.S., yeah. So yeah. there's a little bit of a mix for me, uh, yeah. uh, particularly. But uh, in Ethiopia, I think similar to um, what you guys mentioned, uh, uh, maybe a little bit different from India, but in, in many ways similar. So... From a young age, uh, girls are um, learning how um, to cook. Uh, so it really depends uh, on the family too. Uh, so the more rural the area, um, there's a lot more um, responsibility on women um, at a younger age uh, versus in the cities, um, in Ethiopia, in the cities. So there's maybe a little bit more independence for women um, um, as they grow up. And so, so um, for me, um, I grew up in Addis, uh, which is the capital of Ethiopia, and so uh, maybe a little bit more liberal um, in, uh, in the way my parents um, raised me. And I was the youngest of five, uh, which meant that I didn't have to do anything at home. <laughs> I had uh, two sisters um, uh, who were older who were doing things. And so, um, but I think uh, maybe for women, um, there's more independence in Ethiopia um, than I see here, but um, it really depends on where in Ethiopia. And then moving on from um, Ethiopia to the US, of course, there's a lot more. Uh, liberal way of raising um, girls and um, uh, children um, so wow. just a little bit different <laughs> that's amazing i'm also looking forward to test the injar injar right uh, yes yes, injar. Um, yeah. yes i have many friends from <laughs> ethiopia and wow i've test some of the food and it was amazing it look so at amazing. me man we are from the same country so <laughs> i already test all the countries all the food of my country now let's move to India. Wow, blessing. <laughs> Better than you, there is no one who can explain us how we used to grow up as a woman here in India, how they raise their daughters. Well, uh, talking about kids in India is a 
from my personal experience is quite different from what you guys said. So we, as a, girls, we taught by our parents to do household things. And uh, I was learned pretty earlier, like not 10, but eight. So my mom made sure that I, I'm good at working and things like that. So I did learn at the age of um, eight cooking and cleaning and things to make sure so it's a pretty a difficult thing at the same time they say woman you you have to learn how to cook and you need to do this to order to serve your family yep. and your your job is that that's how we are raised in india so it's not like whether you have a passion of learning things or not but you know like and Indians, like old parents to new parents, it's like a different way of teaching things to the kids. So yeah. that's how I learned. But um, I think by God's grace, I have uh, a mother uh, physical, like who gave me birth. And I also have a spiritual mother. She's an American. So I was raised between two cultures. So I have uh, like, two different ways of doing things. And one is like my mom, a uh, biological mom. She's very strict on things and, uh, you know, like we worship and we, we do have a lot of things that we follow as an Indian. So without that, we shouldn't do this. Without this, you can't do that. So we do have those rules as we grow up. With the American family, she's like, um, she taught us like how to, enjoy what you do so it's like yeah you do this uh, you get to enjoy you know like learn with happy heart so that's how american culturally way that i learned so both ways are quite opposite ways that's a very interesting thing because each one of you guys have um, a particular thing from your country specifically but even then it uh, contribute in your future as a woman. That's fantastic. Only by God's grace is possible. So let uh, before I move to, to the next subject, I just want to remind you guys, if you are here in Andhra Pradesh, Vishakapatnam, and you want to have the best time and the best quality of coffee, hot, ch uh, hot chocolate, chicken sandwich, man, come to bean board china water i can make you sure that this is the place that you really will enjoy you can even come uh, bring someone to date man this is a a good place to to have a, a romantic conversation also <laughs> yeah definitely you will enjoy because we have a a very good environment uh, a very fast and quick team that i have find here in india so come to bean board are you guys enjoying your coffee or yes. your drink? So just show to the camera, please. <laughs> Beam board. This is the place. China Walter. Please don't forget the address. So, uh, yeah, we are all here in India, right? So let me start with Betty. How is your interaction with foreigners? You are a local. And as long as we have been talking, uh, you have shown me that you have a long journey of experience with the international student and other foreigners. So how is to interact with them? How is to relate with a foreigner guys? Well, for me, uh, it's a very great experience because I like it's happened to me for me to grow up with the American family and interacting with a lot of Americans and from different cultures. So interacting with international students, it's been like uh, four or five years for me. Yeah. So uh, I'm a person, I'm a bit curious about learning new things and talking to new people. Yes, you are. Uh, so I do like to get interacted and talk to them. And uh, another thing is like, I like to try new foods. So anything that's new <laughs> for me, I'm a, uh, Curious about what I they use and stuff. Sweet with those spices. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, yeah. I interact with them to know them and know their culture because 
completely from Indians to other countries is completely different way of thinking and like you know interacting with people or knowing other person and uh, it, it could be like um, you could say love or you could say you know treating the person in a different way so I learned it from my mom like you know you invite people with love it doesn't matter where they're from we all are one. The color might be different, but we all are one as a human. So I really enjoy meeting new people from different countries and learn from them and see uh, what they really enjoy being here. And if, if they're not comfortable, I will try to help them as much as, as I can. That's amazing. You're in with Salon here, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Who doesn't enjoy to, to, to know Jerry, man? I'm an angel. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, Betty, how was your interaction with uh, the Indians? And how was your interaction with the Indian culture and society and everything? Yeah, um, so for me, I think it, it's been great. Um, so I get to meet people from just all levels uh, yeah. of uh, my um, daily life. And so I have neighbors, um, Indian neighbors, uh, yeah. Indian uh, people here um, at work, um, uh, people from church uh, that I get to interact with. And so um, I think um, Partly um, the fact that I'm from Ethiopia gives mm -hmm. me somewhat of a common thing to start with, and so um, so it's it's been good. Um, so Indian women um, have been welcoming. Uh, so even if uh, with some that I can't fully have uh, deep conversations with because of language barriers, but still feeling that welcoming uh, nature where. Um, I, I go to uh, their house and we sit and we may not be able to have like a lot of conversation, but we can laugh and like yeah. have tea and like play with the kids. And so, um, so I find um, that to be really uh, fun that um, with um, a lot of Indians, uh, very welcoming um, from day one. And so um, it's been good for me, I think. Um, yeah, so my time in Ethiopia definitely uh, have given me a good opportunity. We are definitely glad to hear that. What about you, Yanira? <laughs> How is your interaction with Indian? Uh, it has been good. Uh, I don't have much interaction because the only place uh, that I stay with Indians is in college and church. And uh, from my Classmates, uh, we don't really talk, uh, just when we need each other. And really? Yeah, but uh, at the beginning, uh. they, yeah, they used to ask some questions and, uh, yeah, but uh, it's not the way I, I expected, like, uh, yeah. because I'm, I have been here for almost two years and uh, yeah. I expect at this time to have, uh, like, a friend, someone Indian that I can consider as friend, not someone that I know and spend uh, some time all in class. But some of them, they don't really speak to us, uh, as I said, only when they need something. And uh, yeah, it's a weird, it's weird, but uh, yeah. But besides this, in church, I have interactions with the uh, ladies and uh, it's pretty good, yeah. Pretty good. Uh, now you have Bless here. She <laughs> have all the time in the world, <laughs> yeah. Tell me. Okay. Nepalist. <laughs> <laughs> so as for me, I would say that it was not something new to me, like yeah. interacting to Indians or anything, because we have a lot of Indians back home. And as I mentioned that there's not much of difference, so it was not really difficult for me. But come like talking about Andhra Pradesh specifically, like it was a bit difficult because of the language and the way they live and everything. I wasn't used to it especially the weather. <laughs> but yeah, so comparatively, like, initially I don't think like I was able to interact with people. Mm -hmm. But later, slowly, slowly, yes, I was able to interact with few of the locals here. And I would say that all of them were very welcoming and they, they were like very helpful. Until today, if you need anything, they will try to help. So I'd say that it was very good. Very good. Yeah, that's amazing. That's 
amazing everybody have a different view about this place and the interaction but they all agree that they are having good times and they have met people who welcome them perfectly in a good way make them feel comfortable but my question is uh you know that i know that you guys will argue but i just want to know who is more welcome let me start with blessing in all the foreigners that you met, I'm talking about specifically the genders. Who is more welcome, the men's or the women's? Welcome. Yeah, it's more friendly, more, more open. I think from my side, I think yeah. I have a both good experience, women and men. Like whoever I met, they're not like um, closed or anything they're open to talk and express their feelings for my part like you know like when i met uh, guys from america or africans that i met uh, past couple of years i think most of them i, mean, I did had a good conversations so they're open okay. and uh, i didn't have anything to say like a negative or anything. No, no. We are talking about this more friendly. friendly. Friendly, I think yeah. in everyone or whoever I met, well, like yes, with really. my experiences. So I didn't meet anyone that's not. That's <laughs> really. what about you, Among the Indians that you have <laughs> met. Like <Nepalist. laughs> uh. I would, I will, I will just. Like appreciate like what she said. There's nothing uh -huh. I'd say. <laughs> I'd say like everyone is friend. <laughs> Please, Jerry. <laughs> I'd say that yeah, like all of them are like friendly. It's nothing that someone is being rude or anything. Like it's like everyone is open. Everything you get to learn and everything. So yeah, everyone is friendly here. I would also say the same. Okay. What about you, younger? Uh, I don't no, share the it's... same opinion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Who is more friendly? It's a bit difficult to decide who is my friendly. Oh, yeah. Because here in India, uh, the boys not really talk to ladies or to girls. Mm -hmm. So uh, even if uh, they want, it's difficult. Maybe only in social media they can test you and things like that. Even my own classmates, sometimes yeah. when I go talk to them, they just they uh, run. almost run. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but for the girls, I can yeah. say just because of this facility to get in conversation with them, I can say the girls are, my, are more friendly mm -hmm. because they can speak with me. I'm a girl also and uh, yeah. yeah. And what about you? Um, yeah, so I think uh, maybe uh, echoing some of what you're saying, Anira, but um, um, I would say maybe uh, generally speaking, mm -hmm. both would be welcoming, but from my uh, personal experience, experience mm -hmm. as a married woman, uh, my interaction with guys would be somewhat reserved and limited. Um, yeah. And so not to say they're not welcoming, but naturally, um, maybe I tend to be more friendly with, with the girls uh, specifically mm -hmm. and limit maybe my interaction with the guys. And so it's hard to say, but I think um, I, as a couple with my husband and I, it uh -huh. would be, I think, similar uh, for both genders. Definitely, now <laughs> we are equalize it. <laughs> now it's become interesting. So among all of those experience, Betty, can you answer me? What is the thing that attracts you more in an Indian culture within the Indian, within the Indian society? What are the things that remind you every time that you think like it can be one quality? When you think about it, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would say uh, maybe people are very willing to help um, yeah. so anything any help you need um, so I remember when we first moved here um, about three years ago uh, we we're having to install some things um, at home and we weren't able to communicate with the installers that were at the place and and so you had people just who are walking by who would come and help right or 
neighbors that we didn't know at the time who would come and help and so and then that has continued on so I would say maybe people are very willing to um, to help uh, in the moment when you need it people are there to help you so yeah they yeah, are very helpful and you Yemi <laughs> why you ask me like this uh, I just uh, I'm a student then I have a limited view mm -hmm. so I can say uh, I like the way they put a fort and the thing they do wow. yeah this is one thing that I really like from them yeah the way uh, they are engaged yeah they are hard hard workers and uh, yeah i really find it really amazing really, right yeah this is also a hard worker that's why she make amazing cooks <laughs> yeah uh, <clears throat> my neighbor nepalese <laughs> tell me yeah uh, i would say like all the things like maybe it's their culture or tradition or anything like the way they celebrate things and everything the colors and everything you know like it's so interesting like the way they dress in every festival and everything and probably you know about diwali the firecrackers so <laughs> everything is a lot more interesting to see you know like you get to Don't remember you see please so there's a lot more thing like you you get to see new things you know like the way they celebrate and everything it fascinates you although it firecrackers yeah, might not let you <laughs> let you sleep but yeah there's a lot of things which fascinates you and you see them like doing all together you know like in a united way and everything so you feel like everyone is united enjoying and everything and even though like if you're passing by or something they would still welcome you or something Mm -hmm. Like they won't just let you pass away or something. They will still try to ask you to enjoy in within and everything. They so. also ask you which one? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> As for me, <laughs> they didn't really. Okay. Which state, madam? They have oh. asked. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and what about you, Blessy? Your experience with a foreigner, guys. What are the qualities that you will never forget and attract you so much? And you remember this one? way they treat women the i think oh yeah let me see bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah because um uh, probably uh like that's what I, it really stood out for me from my childhood to now uh interacting with the different culture people in different uh places so the way they treat others is uh, completely different from uh, what I have seen in India. Mm -hmm. So from men to women and the uh, way they treat and how we get uh, treated and like seen. So it's like uh, for us it's kind of like wow, it's like how could this uh, men from other countries are more loyal to women and not too hard or like you know using like abusive words or anything you know like that's what it stood out for me yeah, so like, yeah. that's amazing <laughs> it's good to hear that we treat well the women did you hear what she said right <laughs> we treat well the women uh-huh exception <laughs> yeah uh so now we came all from different places. I'm always repeating this because just to stimulate your mind uh, for the sentence that I will be using. Uh, what are the things that you heard about foreigners that when you met the majority of them, you didn't find it? The myths, habits or something? If I meet new people? like new Americans. No, uh, uh, before you met a foreigner, you heard about many things like Africans, Americans, and all those things. So what are the things that you heard about it and you never find it in any foreigners that you met, that you have met? Um, I think so far, I never heard anything negative mm -hmm. growing up. Uh, yeah. For me to see uh, um, a person from different country for first time when I used to work in a grocery shop yes. shop like I saw a couple of Americans and uh, like from different country they come and shop and they leave so 
basically uh, when I first saw somebody from a different country, I thought like, oh, this color is there too, not only us. Wow. So that's how uh, it, as a child, my expression was like, yeah. oh, not only us, but there are some other people like same color as ours. So, yeah. um, so for me, uh, never heard anything negative about other country people growing up, but you know, like, some things as like technology grew yep. maybe heard and uh, judged like from others and yep. but I never had any uh, kind of uh, bad experience with anyone yep. so uh, for me it's like uh, I would say don't judge anyone if you don't know about it like completely so because it's so easy to talk about it uh, they're like this, they're like that, but I would say experience first and then judge them. So without that, I, I don't think you, nobody has the right to judge anyone. Wow. So that's experience first and then judge them. I like this sentence. <laughs> experience, come. I have many African friends. <laughs> if you want to experience them, just please, please, please subscribe in our channel, put your like and comment, please, and share the link. I believe that this podcast will bring a value for many people's lives, especially the girls, Indian girls and international girls. It will be amazing. So for you, Yanira, you heard uh, many things about India. So you are here already almost two years. So what you heard that you didn't find here and what you heard that you really find it? Uh, there is a thing that I used to watch in almost every Indian movies yeah. that when I got here, I was really, I'm still disappointed. <laughs> like uh, Because in the movies, there's always music and yeah. the people dancing everywhere. I so as uh, soon I reached here, I was expecting people even to welcome me with the dancing, yes. things like that. Definitely. <laughs> I came oh here, God. but the, nothing. Jesus and Christ. <laughs> Mercy. Mercy. <laughs> and I was expecting all Indians, girls, ladies, knowing how to dance, things that I used to see. And the, when I asked my classmates, they, no, I don't know how to dance, things like that. And the, yeah, this is the only thing. Yeah. Things like uh, long hair, I expected and I found here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She cut it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, a Nepalist. Oh, you are neighbors. But I believe that before you came here, you heard about something. That's why I would say that specifically for Andhra Pradesh, when I was coming, I looked for it like I, s I won't say like I heard much, a lot of things, but something that I've heard of is like conservative minds and everything. Yeah. But as I came, of course there are, but I wouldn't say like the way I expected it is and I would say like, you know, like I've seen like most of the girls also like, you know, like with open minds and everything. So yeah. something I heard that no, like they are very conservative mind, they won't go, no. But if you see, of course there exists some, but if you see like, no, there are a lot of women, open minds and everything, you know, they speak frank and everything, broad minded and everything. So I'd say that and also I would also add something to what she said like of course you should never judge a book by its cover. So. Experience guys. Experience. My team, the Nosh podcast team have uh, many single guys so you have many options to experience them. <laughs> so uh, what about you Betty? Before you came in US or in Ethiopia you heard about this country, you heard about many things. Yeah, um, so I'll say India, um, maybe it's said that it's a very secular culture. Um, um, that's what I heard before. Um, but coming here um, and seeing how things are done, religion very much um, is part of everyday life. Uh, yeah. um, and so that's something that surprised me. I think it kind of goes into uh, basically everything, everyday life, um, religion is a part of um, daily life where it's hard to separate it out. <laughs> and so I'll say maybe that's something I think uh, in all um, in all levels of society, it seems like uh, maybe secularism is not so apparent. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. 
Definitely. Uh, I'm also disappointed because I have many Indian friends. Friends. Many Indian friends that they don't really know <laughs> how to dance. <laughs> I'm disappointed. But bless it, bless it, dance. Dance a lot. Yeah. She danced a lot. <laughs> she even wanted to try African dance. But one thing that caught my attention when you were speaking is that you heard about this uh, specific p place, uh, Andhra, Andhra Pradesh, specifically in Visakhapatna. Uh, you heard about close minded, right? So, my next question is about relationship. Because this subject will explain us well if people are really open or closed minded right so for now i will start asking for the student first uh how is the relationship bef between the foreigner and indians i'm talking about dating or marriage so have you date if you not date why 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 didn't you date with an indian yanira i will start with you uh, dating between foreigners and indian or yeah. indians and no indian and foreigners uh, mm. i never had interesting at yeah. all <laughs> at first i mean mm. and uh, i i haven't seen like uh, yeah, any couple that is foreign and Indian, and uh, between oh, among my classmates, mm -hmm. they don't really date even among themselves. So because uh, Indian as part of their culture, I think uh, I don't know if they will really date, but I think they made the date some months or maybe year before marriage. So. Uh, and then I think it's difficult for them to date uh, foreigners. Why? Yeah, be also because like they are so restricted. Rest like, uh, restricted? Yeah. Mm. It's like, uh, as I said, yeah. we don't even talk to them properly. Okay. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's difficult for me to explain really, but uh, it's really complicated to have a deep relationship with Indians, so it, I'm talking about friendship. Yeah. Then when we go to dating, it's more complicated. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen any couple that is foreign seen. and Indian. Yeah, I'm talking about my yeah. <laughs> classmates yeah, also. Curious. Because even my classmates, they don't date among them, Indian. If they do, maybe it's in secret. Yeah, so... At, uh, from Indians at uh, ages before marriage, mm. they the only focus they have is to study. Oh. I think they are not allowed to to get married while they are studying, and uh, that's why I haven't seen for it. Oh, glad of your colleagues. They are focused on study. Yeah. <laughs> this is the dream of our parents, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about you? As for me, I wouldn't say that I have not seen like mm. an international or national yeah. dating. We even heard someone like an Ethiopian guy marrying an Indian girl or something yeah. recently. So I won't say that I've never seen. Yes. But I'll say that I felt like the guys here are a bit scared to even talk to girls like mm -hmm. how to start a conversation like maybe they would want to but they don't know how to start conversation they will be just like indirect indirectly people would saying that oh this guy is interested in you or something but when it comes to like one-on-one -on -one, yeah. they won't be like confessing you so know why? that's not like that's the main thing like you won't know like why they are doing that so, so even among themselves i mm -hmm. would feel like not just like international or national even among locals themselves. yeah even among themselves i haven't seen them like talking you see even in class when you sit mm -hmm. guys will be separate girls will be separate like they would like it's it will be like very you know like you can't even talk or something and if you do go and ask for notes or something it's something like a crime or something so yeah it's like a interactive is a bit less i would say but i've also seen few of the successful relationship like all over the world where Indians and internationals has Definitely. taken. So I'd say that it's just about the places and also it depends on them, 
like accepting love marriages and arranged marriages because few of them respect their you know restriction from the parents that we would we would love our child to do arranged marriages so that's something like respectable i wouldn't say that we are against of it or something and few, few, few parents also allows love marriages so they do it because parents would of course want you to be with a guy or a girl who will respect you and everything right we'll come there on the arranged marriage <laughs> they run so fast we still have time so let's figure out from <laughs> bless it <laughs> Have you seen uh, a relationship between uh, a foreign man and an Indian girl or an Indian man and a foreign girl and how was it and why for some is impossible has uh has Janvi or Yanira say that the men are afraid to come and start a conversation Well Jerry um Growing up with my mom, my mom, uh, my spiritual mom is married to an Indian man. Yes. So they're happily married for 35 years. Mm. Uh, from her experience, I just uh, ask her a couple of questions before I came here. So the first question that I ask is like, what do you think of being together for 35 years, right? So she said like, um, I think from for, from her side, she said like Indian men, like when you know the person pretty well who went to other country and came, are more loyal and uh, compared to other Indian men. So my dad is more loyal and more, he gave her more freedom to you know, uh, choose the way she wants to live in India, never forced anything on her from Indian way, like, you know, Indian cultural things or like beliefs or anything, but he just let her be herself. That's the greatest thing that she really enjoys about and she loves about my dad. So, and I do have uh, other friends who got married to Indians yes. who, but it's like NRI people who born in India, grew up in America. So I have a friend who recently uh, moved to India. She's living in uh, Hyderabad right now, but she's married about six, seven years right now and she's happy with him. And my sister, my spiritual sister also married to an Indian. She's an American. So I think I've seen a lot of people who married to uh, a different country people and being an Indian or being an American. Um, from my side, I think it's the understanding level, level of between two persons and not about the, like, you know, you don't rub things on each other, but you teach one another with the love and if they're not comfortable with it, I think you better not force it. So that's what I've seen in my mom's life. And in your experience also? In my experience, I never dated anyone uh, as like, but I had a conversation and there are, there's a guy who was interested for the first time and I think I was able to talk to him for a couple of months. Uh, but it was good, but He's too far away, but you know, he's not here. Yes, yes. So it didn't work out. But I would say from my idea of uh, interacting with other men from apart from Indians, I would say um, nothing negative about it. Or uh, I would say that compared to Indian men, uh, I would say that um, they're open to listen and uh, like, you know, take a time to understand. Uh, here is for us in the, as an Indian, we don't take time to understand. We try to, we get pushed by some by our parents and, uh, and some by the cultural things. So we get pushed so we don't get to interact or get to know each other. So that's the main cause that nobody is really interested to date. Take, uh, first step, uh, right? <laughs> take a first step. Of yeah, course, <laughs> course. you could say that. <laughs> Believe that you you watched the the first episode. If you didn't watch, just go there and check it in our YouTube channel. 
But I told about I told I told about the, my story with my first Indian crush and love that I get disappointed <laughs> because she told me that we would not end together. She can love me, she can like me, but unfortunately we will not be together because of what my friend Nepali say, arranged marriage. So uh, I will start with a married woman. Sorry, Nayanira. <laughs> I will start with a married woman. So Betty, how is the relationship in Ethiopia uh, before you get married? And how is the process? Does the arranged marriage also exist there? And what do you think about it? Yeah, um, so in Ethiopia, particularly um, if you are from the city, again, I'll say this because uh, there's a vast difference in experiences, yes. uh, city versus um, the village or rural areas of Ethiopia. And so if you're from the city, uh, obviously you date, um, yep. you yep. find someone you like, and then, you know, uh, the whole process happens. Uh, and then uh, whenever there's talk of marriage, then that's when you would take it to uh, your parents. And so um, my experience in Ethiopia versus in America is in Ethiopia, your relationship, although allowed, <laughs> is very uh, secret. And so you don't go and tell your mom and dad, oh, I, I, I have this person, right? And so at least um, from the time I was there, it wasn't the case. Um, so the dating uh, life is there, but maybe not as open uh, to parents and family yeah. uh, versus in America, uh, you start dating. And like when I started dating my uh, now husband, yes. um, about a month into our relationship, we went uh, to uh, his family, right, to, to meet the family. and even before there was any talk of marriage. And so, um, so yeah, so in Ethiopia, different from here, uh, rural areas, they do arrange marriages, it still happens. Uh, but in the city, you date someone you like, and then you proceed to marry. It's your own choice. So what do you think about it, Yanira? <laughs> How is it in Angola? People also get married by arranged marriage? Uh, I can say that it's the same in rural areas, yes. Do you know any rural area in Angola that do this? In other cities, in other states, yeah, yeah they do this. But for me, I'm mm -hmm. from a capital and uh, from a city in case. For us, it's the same thing. If you meet a guy, you like him, he likes you, and you guys decide to start dating, you guys can start dating. Yeah. And you don't go directly to your parents and say, I start dating, things like that. But when you are sure that uh, it's a serious relationship, then you go to your parents and you inform them, I, I met this guy, uh, he's studying, he's working, whatever he's doing, and you inform, and uh, I want to, have a, to continue to have a relationship with him. Yeah. And for us, we have traditional marriage also. And when we, after dating for some time, and uh, we get to a point that we want to get married, then we go and first we have the traditional marriage. Yeah, but for us, our parents give us this freedom. And for me in particular, uh, um, when I decide that I want to, to start dating, even before I start dating, I talk to my mom, and I say that uh, I think now I want to date, and she talk to me and she say, it's okay, but uh, don't forget, I want to be the first person to know about it because my mom is my friend. And then when I start dating, I informed her and uh, after some months, I introduced my boyfriend to her. And uh, yeah, we have been continuing this relationship and I know his family, he knows my family. And, uh, wow. Such a good love story for Angolans. <laughs> yeah, so... What about you, my friend Nepalese? How is to see like in the other culture they have this freedom to choose whatever they want and they start dating and some parents accept it and then they decide to get married and they don't move forward to the arranged marriage. 
What do you think about it? How is in Nepal? Is the same thing in the rent? As you mentioned yeah. that <coughs> as some of the parents, some as you mentioned. Parents. So yeah. it depends on families, I would say, because I earlier mentioned it too. It depends on family if they accept it or not. Definitely. But I would also say that some of the families would like, some of the parents would want their child to do arranged marriage. But as Yanira mentioned, like sometimes when you like, it's not about dating, when you are sure about marrying the guy, when you both are sure that yes, we can take it forward and take the big step of marriage, Definitely. then you can go and talk and like they convince. Like mm. I've seen like, like people convincing, like when they are in serious relationship, even your friends or family would help you to convince your parents, you know, that, that this thing is not like something like would date and just go off or something. Like it's something serious we would want to take. So when they convince them, family do see like how things and everything they check and then they do allow it. So it's not that even if they would want like arranged marriage to happen yeah. it's not something that compulsory if they like if the children really found like a good partner and everything and they are able to convince then they do allow it and also love marriages takes place like you know, even on your dating phase you few girls or guys would also introduce each other before the even the marriage thing happens or anything like even the normal dating period like they do say so everything is like I would say like it depends on family to family I won't say that there is specifically arranged marriage or love marriage or something it depends on how you are in a relationship and how you are in serious about it to convince your parents because of, if of course if you are serious and everything then no one would say no you know that's amazing <laughs> great explanation so so bless him tell me about the arranged marriage and now you know a lot about foreigners right so what you think about it uh, how is it the arranged marriage is still happen here in Vizak specifically or now people they 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 have the choice to choose whatever they want or what do you think of those parents or this foreigner culture that allowed their daughters to to choose by their own well, we still have and uh, the arranged marriage going on and it'll be continued. The thing is like parents are a bit open now for to give them a choice, at least one choice to choose who they Only want. One? Yeah. Only one. Only one. If you miss the first shot, <laughs> no more. And you if you get end up with marriage and the marriage is not going on well, they would just simply say they won't stand up for you. They just simply say that you choose it, so you deal with it. Wow. So it's like some parents will support you, stand with you, and uh, get you married again. So that's how it will be. So I would say that arranged marriage is still happening, and they would definitely give you an option, but you have to, like par every parent has an expectation, like, because they raise their kids very well with education and they want the best for their kids, right? So uh, if they come with some, a girl or a boy come with the person that they like, they would definitely analyze everything, family details and uh, what are they good at and what they're not good at, will they match with them or not? And then based on that, they would say yes. That's amazing. Yeah, even if you dated for six, seven years during the college or anything, six, and seven you, years yeah, dating. there are. How? It, it happens and the only parents, in They India. don't know nothing about it. There, there is a man that I know who, they were together almost fourteen years, and wow. then they got married. Like it took that much time for both family to say yes. Fourteen years. Fourteen years. How many degrees, guys? <laughs> Yo, 14 years. Yeah, Come sometimes on. you gotta be patient when you want. Nah, this is not patient. <laughs> this is to do, I think, five or four degrees, man. Come on. You will so, come yeah, many times are. in Andhra University, man. Yeah, you will come. Yo, 14 years. Come on. But one thing very interesting, even though they have this kind of arranged marriage and we as a foreigners we have the freedom to to choose whatever they want they still have 
the average of diverse very low comparing to other countries. So what you guys think about it? What is the reason behind it? Any one of you guys can give your own point of view. I will not say first the ladies because you all are ladies. So <laughs> someone speak, please. <laughs> um, maybe I'll start. I think um, so this would be just my perspective, nothing from what I read. Uh, yeah. But uh, based on culturally how things work, um, there is yeah. definitely uh, great uh, care about what other people think about you here in India. Mm -hmm. And so I can imagine um, that being a factor because divorce is looked down upon uh, very much uh, here. Um, and so that could contribute to people staying married, um, even though maybe there's a definite conflict. And so personally, um, I, I would say um, I do believe based on my biblical beliefs, uh, divorce is wrong. And so in my personal uh, belief, it's, it's good that people are staying together, um, but that does not mean that there are no broken homes uh, because um, I, have, I have seen, uh, heard uh, um, a lot of conflict that happens within the house, uh, men uh, that uh, definitely physically abuse uh, their wives, and, and so those com conflicts are there. Um, just like they are everywhere else and so in other places in other countries maybe those particular relationships end in divorce yeah. um, versus in India maybe those people stay married because the image of being that divorced guy or girl um, greatly affects your view in society as opposed to it being okay in uh, other countries so so that's what I think is maybe uh, this taboo uh, culture maybe keeps a lot of uh, people married, which um, maybe as sad as it could be for some uh, women, some men too. Um, I would say personally, good that they're staying married together, yeah. um, but that also does not mean there isn't conflict just like um, there is in other countries. Definitely. I want to say first the ladies, man. You are all ladies, so someone speak, please. All right, then. Mm -hmm. I would say that, of course, like, <clears throat> divorce is not something like if you are in a relationship, mm -hmm. it's better for you to try to talk out things rather than ending it. But it also doesn't mean, like, if there is abusive relationship or something going very worse, then it's better to come out of it. But what I've seen in most of the families, if there is some like, you know, even the tiny conflicts and they go for like divorce things, so that doesn't make sense. So all the family and they all sh like try to like keep the relationship rather than going for divorce, like talk out things, sit down and like, you know, mm -hmm. come out of the, so come out for the solution and then like, you know, keep the relationship like going on rather than ending it on just not so, good reasons too so I would say but it also doesn't mean that if the relationship is going worse that it's affecting the person mentally physically or something then it's better to end also but I would also prefer like people to continue the relationship like forever yeah especially you women are very aggressive with words and <laughs> yeah definitely my class definitely guys if she's aggressive you know we are the most <laughs> most quiet guys in the relationship men are always quiet yeah it's always start from your side guys but <laughs> let's move on <laughs> yeah bless you can speak <laughs> well uh, divorce in india i think compared to for my experience of hearing it it's got higher count uh, taking divorce now because of lack of, like it could be financial support and some things are like uh, dowry problems, yep. uh, family uh, rules and regulations, and silly reasons also there to take a divorce now. So it's not, uh, the more of divorce is about the people taking divorces because of 
understanding and also how pressured that they have from their parents also and they end up getting divorced nowadays a lot like compared to the scale of one to ten so there are some more now uh, that's great and um, for the last one <laughs> Anita uh, I also think that it's based on traditional things also uh, because here in India um, <laughs> okay <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> wedding yeah. is a bless is a blessing so but uh, <clears throat> there it must be health for both sides and also for children included in that relationship if uh, the divorce are done here I believe that it's because of the Indian culture uh, if uh, some of them they have don't have the freedom to choose who married uh, then I don't believe that they will have also this freedom to go in a divorce uh, I believe that uh, there is the face of the society also uh, if the relationship if the relationship is not a, is not healthy for both sides in the most of case the woman will be, will be the most uh, affected in the case of a divorce because some of women may not working and the, and the, I have seen some cases that the children have to stay with the, the husband because of financial conditions and yeah. things like this so to avoid this some of them they prefer to keep in their relationship even though sometimes it's abuse it's not healthy it is they are having mental physical abuse but they keep quiet and uh, facing everything by themselves just in case to have uh, their kids protected but actually they are not being protected because if they are facing this kind of things inside the house uh, they will grow with the mentality that is not health at all uh, but uh, yeah and the, because we know here in India also uh, the divorced women they are not accepted by the society so yeah that's why I think most of them they don't have uh, uh, the courage uh, to go and uh, ask for a divorce. Wow, that's sad and heavy on the same time. But um, in any place we accept uh, a violence, in any place um, we accept abuse. And this is happening around the world. Even in Africa, we have many situations, uh, couples being oppressed oppressive by the, the their own partners yeah and we as a society we don't accept it if we go to the religious views the same thing you will even get worse yeah especially for those who are christian man so <laughs> say no for the violence uh and moving to the last subject uh let's talk about the view of a woman inside of society uh one month back Thanks God, we are now on the number one country. Angola is on the number one country with the most entrepre woman entrepreneurship. So, and also we are on top 20, where uh, a country where the women have uh, high positions and the leadership or manager positions around the world. So. I will ask you, how is it in your country? How is it the woman in, in the society? Is there any problem if she take a position, a very strategic position inside of organization or even in the society? Let me start by my Nepalist <laughs> friend. <laughs> All right. Then I would say like, if you talk about past and everything, history and everything, then girls were not like, allowed to go out they weren't seen that you can't be above a post of a man like you need to be lower you need to handle like home housework and everything but as for now a lot has changed i would say like now girls are more ruling the world than guys or something and now it's a thing to be proud if a girl from a family goes somewhere and like 
builds her own identity, like now knowing not by your father's name, but you are known by your own name. Then it's a very proud moment for a family, for their parents, and even the father and the mother, your parents will be like really proud of you. So I'd say that it's a proud moment. They see like they send their children and everything outside to grow, to do bigger things, achieve and everything. So I'd say that it's a really appreciable thing that it has changed a lot from comparing to past to now. Uh, what about here in India, Bless? Yeah, a lot changed past the 80s to or now, 90s, even the 60s. President is a, is a woman. So. Uh, till now, uh, I would say like as a woman in India, yep. you're not allowed to go out and work uh, like 1860s. So, uh, till that time, uh, if the rule was like if husband passes away, women also get burned with the husband. So that's how the rules in India used to be, especially for women. So compared to the history till now, I think women's got a lot of freedom uh, to work, go out and do things because uh, not only wife, mm -hmm. but also work and take care of the family. So I would say that women are in everything now than before. So it's a lot of freedom. And also, uh, you know, like we do have a lot of encouragement that build up past years till today. Definitely. And how is it in Ethiopia, Betty? <laughs> Jerry, so this is where this whole mix of um, like places um, gets me because uh, I think a lot of that part of my life happened in America. Yep. Uh, as opposed to Ethiopia. So, but uh, from um, just some of the experiences I see in my family, uh, the time of my mom, uh, it was maybe a little bit more oppressive uh, that women were not able to progress as well uh, versus today, um, it's a very different um, atmosphere for women. Um, I have a sister who is a manager at a bank and wow. hopes to, um, you know, excel in that. Uh, uh, but then, of course, my mom, um, she she was not really destined to something like that. And so a lot has changed. And so, but for me, um, a lot of that part, uh, that part of my life happened in America where um, really, um, you don't really have a whole lot of restrictions uh, on women. And so um, there's a lot of encouragements uh, for women to take on higher positions. And um, so there's great push in society for women to succeed. Um, so yeah, so my experience in Ethiopia would be based on what I see in my family. Uh, but then from my experience in America, of course, America is a great uh, a land of opportunities for, especially for women, so. Indeed. Uh, and last but not the least, in Angola, Yanira. Yeah. As you just mentioned, mm -hmm. right? in Angola, we have too many entrepreneurs. And uh, it's not like uh, the women are already in equilibrium with the, with the men. But uh, we have been occupying or taking a good place in it. And uh, one thing that we have been learning as Angolan yeah. is like uh, the men are there to are not are there to increase our values, and also we have to have things on our own. own. Can you, wait, wait. Can you repeat own. the sentence? We are there for what? Sorry. To increase. <laughs> to increase your value. Only. Oh yes. We God. will have our God own value. <laughs> and uh, it's often to see women in my country having great positions. Yeah. And uh, we have the freedom for it, and we work for it because it has not been like that. Uh, we have been working because I believe that uh, men and women we have the same capacity for work. Uh, I'm saying work, but <laughs> there are some things like uh, that uh, we cannot put in the same level. But uh, we work hard to it, so we deserve to have the position that we are having right now. Mm -hmm. And um, we like to get into business also. 
uh, even though in my country it's often to see a student we are studying but we are already having business because we are thinking in our future in case that uh, when I when I'm done with my degree I also have a business going on and uh, I can help my family in each way so I think uh, in this position we have been working very well and uh, yes we are powerful we are women and uh, we can yeah that's amazing you guys are women and you can there is no limit for you guys actually uh in my own experience i have been see women as a software engineers as electrical engineers as a mechanical engineers women's welding yeah and do some stuff that it was not possible in the past so if you are watching this and you are a woman, believe that you can do whatever you want. Just put a fortunes on it and be focused on it. So for the last question, I would ask you, each one of you guys, to give your advice for those wo women who are planning to come here in India for study, work, open a business or for tourism or even for dating an Indian man. <laughs> so... <laughs> Bless you, you can do the opposite, you know. <laughs> you can do the opposite because I believe that in your experience with a foreigner, guys, yeah, you have seen many things. So you can also give advice for many Indian girls. And guys, man, foreigners, bro, here as African, specifically for African, here we don't pay the dollar, man. You know that these girls back home, they are expensive, man. Here we re receive. So think twice. <laughs> think twice. So let's start with Betty. Um, I would suggest anyone coming from other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, I would just say that wherever you're going, yes. I would say just learn the culture and adopt it because when we come or like my point of view is that when we go to other places we don't want to offend anyone and at the same time when you're coming to another country i would just say know about the culture try to follow as much as as you can so that nobody will point you out or like criticize you or like hurt you so uh, that's the main re reason I would say because even in the Bible it says like when you're in a Rome be like a Romanian so you learn what the culture is and you respect so if we don't have to follow everything that Indians follow but I would just say that just learn enough for you to be safe in wherever you are definitely enemy <clears throat> I would say anyone who wants to come to India or wherever else in the world, uh, the first thing is that they need to be strong mentally because it really affects, like when you actually come, the first thing you feel like nothing is going wrong, how am I going to adjust and everything. So if you are not mentally strong to handle anything, it will be very difficult for you. And secondly, I would say that we all are from different backgrounds, different countries, we have different everything. So when you go to a new place, you'll find everything, most of the things different to how, what you are used to. Yeah. So at least you must try to adapt, but if you are not able to, don't even like criticize it, let it rest, let you, you must just respect it, you know, like the way it is. At least if you are not able to, you do your thing in your thing and let them do theirs rather than you know like commenting or passing comments or judging or criticizing them that how they are doing it's different back home or something back home is different so for them this is their home so yes. for them this is it so rather than you know saying that maybe when they go to their like to your country they will see that the things are different back home so it's not about that so you need to respect if you are trying it's good if you're not able to just do your things, enjoy your life, try to learn new things, grow, grow your mind and everything, and just be. Exactly. <laughs> if you come to India, I think first you should be open to the differences. Uh, because as soon you leave your country or you leave your home to go to another place, of course you will not find, that's not your country, you will not find the things exactly 
as yeah. you have been seeing your country. We are looking uh, for phones about a year. <laughs> Full by the bomb please. Uh, <laughs> yes. So there will be some challenge. There will be things that you are maybe not be comfortable to do, but you should be able to respect everyone's and uh, to respect other people's culture. And the one we are in. Uh, in a different place, it's always good to try to th to understand the people and their reason to have uh, the culture and uh, the thoughts that they have, and also uh, try to follow to follow something that you think that can add some value to yourself or that uh, can just cooperate with others. Uh, coming to Indians mean to you will be able to know different culture, to know different food, to know different language, and uh, it's is, it's good. And uh, my advice to you guys that want to visit India is like knowing the culture, be able for differences, and uh, yeah, be friend to each other and uh, respect. Definitely, <laughs> and you, Betty. Um, I think um, you guys have said a lot of it, but I think for me specifically, I would say maybe manage expectations um, uh, because yeah. uh, they're just like anywhere else, there are many different types of people in India, uh, many different personalities that welcome you or reject you. Um, but specifically talking for people who are coming from Africa, um, yeah. I think definitely manage expectations because I am married to uh, an American man. I have lived in America in many ways uh, more American than I am Ethiopian. Um, and so coming to India with my American white <laughs> uh, husband, um, it's very interesting to see uh, the treatment um, I receive when I go out with him versus when I go out by myself, right? And so there's great, um, great difference uh, Whereas when I am with him, uh, people uh, maybe treat me uh, differently versus when I'm out by myself. As sometimes I disappear as an Indian, people confuse me. Uh, yeah. But when I am not seen as an Indian, then the treatment would be uh, very different. Very um, different. And I'm sure um, you guys probably have experienced some of it. And so uh, definitely for um, uh, ladies, uh, men coming from Africa, um, it, it could be a difficult place. And so uh, if you have to come to here uh, to study, um, just uh, knowing that there would be somewhat of a different treatment um, from people here, but then also understanding on the surface those things will happen, but that doesn't mean that you won't make friends. And so um, that would be my advice is if you have to come, um, know that there could be difficult times, uh, but um, adjustment is adjustment. Anywhere in the world you would move to, um, you're gonna have to adjust to uh, different people, different food, um, so that'll always be there, but that would be my take, yeah. Definitely, so I have two sentences for you guys today. The first one is, don't judge experience first <laughs> yeah the second one manage your expectation so this podcast is sponsored by Beanboard china walter as i say if you want to have a, a quality time the best coffee here in andhra pradesh vishakapatnam here in Beanboard china walter this is the last podcast this is the second episode i will request you to go back to the videos like subscribe to our, ch to our channel and comment it but guys please uh don't take us badly i know that from this time you will start commenting now about your point of view this is their point of view as uh janvi say everyone have his own ways to do the things and to see the things we just need to respect and to share what we think about it so we love you guys we are waiting for your feedback of this episode this is the nosh podcast so everyone say <laughs> goodbye and see you <laughs> goodbye <laughs> bye
The Nosh Podcast.